ya <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, I bear witness that there is no greater deity than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last messenger. Alhamdulillah, I'm grateful to be here once again, reflecting with you on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'd like to remind myself first and foremost, and then all of you watching and listening, that Allah invites us all to the Quran. And it is up to us to accept this invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from within these pages in the Quran, we will find many, many beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the attributes that we talk about in this series. And one of these attributes we'll talk about today is At-Tawab or Al-Tawab. And the meaning of this uh, attribute is the ever pardoning, the acceptor of our return. Al-Tawab is not just a name, it's an assurance. It's a promise that no matter how far we stray away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that there is a way back. And this promise gives us this comfort, knowing that even if we stumble really deeply, really deeply into the darkness of sin, that there is a beacon of hope. There is this beacon that is always shining, always calling us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and calling us back to righteousness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned numerous times throughout the Quran. And each instance of this gives us a glimpse into the boundless nature uh, of Allah's mercy. You know, if we look in uh, Surah Baqarah, for example, in verse 37, we read about the story of Adam -Islam, and his wife Eve or Hawa -Islam. And after they commit the mistake of eating from the forbidden tree, you know, Allah teaches them a prayer. Allah's, Allah tells them a dua that they then use to repent for their sins. But before they, before they can repent, you know, Allah tells us what happens and says, then Adam was inspired with words of prayer by his Lord. So he accepted his repentance. Surely he's the acceptance of repentance, most merciful. And the way Allah describes himself in this verse is Allah says, rahim. So the whole ayah says, Adamu min fataba alayhi innahu rahim. So in this verse, Allah is introducing himself as a tawab the one who accepts repentance. But to truly, truly get into the depth of this divine attribute, you know, we have to explore what is tawbah, which is the Arabic word for repentance, and what it truly means. And the word tawbah is rooted in the concept of returning back, back to righteousness after having deviated away from it. So whenever we, we deviate, whenever we sin, whenever we stray from the straight path, the course that we should follow is repentance. And this is the act of acknowledging that, you know, we have deviated. It's an awareness, having that awareness that we've done something that we shouldn't be doing, and then making that conscious decisions to return back to righteousness. And this is a deeply human experience. You know, if, as human beings, we are inherently flawed. And, and that is just part of our nature. We are prone to making mistakes. We're prone to falling into error. And we will do this again and again and again. And we are forgetful. As beings, we lose sight of our divine purpose because we get busy. We get you know, sucked into our day-to-day -day life and, and that causes us to forget our responsibilities. And that in that moment, we should always remember to come back and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, as, as people, we tend to continually stay connected to activities, to other people or to things or objects that will cause us to deviate. Um, and we know better sometimes, but that, that is where we should always remind ourselves that whenever we forget, we need to come back to the boundless mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
doesn't matter how many times we make this error, we should, we should always remind ourselves to come back to Allah. So coming back to the story of Adam and, and Eve um, from that verse, Allah teaches Adam alayhi salam, and we know this as the dua of Adam alayhi salam, and we'll find this dua in the Quran as well, in Surah Al-Araf, verse number 23, and this is chapter 7, where Adam alayhi salam says, Qala rabbana zalamna anfusna wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasreen. And that translates to our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. So this is Adam alayhi salam having that awareness that, that they have made the mistake. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. If you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we will certainly be from among the, from among the losers. So this is Adam alayhi salam having that awareness and then asking Allah to please have mercy on them. Otherwise, they will not be uh, from among those who are you know, the winners, who are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this tells us that the act of returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a passive one. It's an active one where we are making the conscious choice and decision to return. And it's not just, you know, in turn, it's not just enough to internally acknowledge our mistakes. We have to take steps towards repentance. And how do we do that? You know, one example in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, verse 110, we are told, you know, whoever commits evil or wrongs themselves, then seeks Allah's forgiveness, will certainly find Allah all forgiving, most merciful. So Allah is basically breaking it down for us. Three steps. First step, acknowledge you made the mistake. And that means that we have to have the awareness of what is it that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second step is having this sincere feeling of remorse. You know, it's not just uh, uh, when we have remorse, we are actually exhibiting that we have this connection. We have this belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for us. And then, you know, seeking that forgiveness from, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the third part of it, and that's the repentance piece of it. You know, Sheikh Ibn Atala, uh, Ibn Atala, one of the most renowned scholars in the Islamic Sufi tradition or spiritual tradition, um, in his book, Kitab al-Hikam, he writes, a sign of the heart's death is absence of sadness over the acts of disobedience. In this case, the heart the Sheikh is talking about is the spiritual heart. And through this example, the Sheikh is basically telling us that, you know, giving us example, for example, to sustain ourselves, our physical selves, we nourish our body with food. But how do you sustain the spiritual heart? That is where Iman and faith in Allah comes in. To perform righteous acts is to continually feed that spiritual heart of ours, to continually stay connected, so that when we do disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we don't remain in that state of disobedience. We have that feeling within us that says, okay, I shouldn't have done this. Let me go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just having that sign within us, that feeling that says, no, I should not have done that, is a sign that our spiritual heart is not dead. And that is something that we should celebrate. You know, not the death, but that the heart is still alive, it's still beating. And whatever we need to do, you know, we need to maintain that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the journey of repentance is not a one-time event. It's not something that you do and then you, and then you stop and then maybe come back to it when you, when you think about it. It's a continuous journey of self-purification. So if you think about a, um, a, a, um, a brass vase or something like that, where you continuously have to polish it to keep it clean, don't let that, that tarnish you know, take away the sheen from that, from that object. Your heart is kind of like that. You have to continuously keep scrubbing, continuously keep cleaning it continuously reconnecting back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, is to worship Allah. And by going back to Allah, we are entering into that state of worship. So with each mistake we make, it's an opportunity for us to turn back and, and turn back to the path of righteousness. In Surah Zumar, for example, in verse 30, 53, Allah reminds us uh, that, O my servants, who have exceeded the limits against their souls, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy, for Allah certainly forgives all sins. He is indeed the all-forgiving, most merciful. And this verse is a testament to Allah's boundless mercy. And the mercy of Allah, Al-Tawab, is not just for those who have strayed far. You know, it's also for those who are righteous, who seek to maintain their proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it doesn't matter where we are uh, in, our, in our personal journey, it's always important that that you know, reconnect back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you know, in Surah Al-Baqarah, again, in, in verse 222, Allah tells us, Allah loves those who always return to him in repentance and those who purify themselves. And this verse highlights for us that Toba is an ongoing process of purification. It's a continuous journey. And there is no mistake or act of disobedience that we can perform, that we can engage in, that will keep us from receiving Allah's mercy. There's only one exception to this, and this is the continuous um, or consistent um, performance of shirk or polytheism, where we associate others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as we have life, as long as we are breathing, you know, the doors of Allah's repentance are always going to be open to us. And, and this mercy encompasses all creation. And it is up to us individually to then go out and seek and ask for it. You know, the Quran tells us, challenges us not just spiritually, but also challenges us, challenges us intellectually. You know, Allah makes thinking part of this. And to think about our actions and reflect on them, to perform tafakkur and perform tadabbur. You know, tafakkur is, is uh, reflection and tadabbur is internal reflection. It is up to us to recognize that you know, we have a deficit. We have something that we need to do differently. And returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you think about it, is a way to show kindness to ourselves. Um, you know, we live in times where there is, there is a lot more emphasis now. There is this awareness that mindfulness is something that we should be doing a whole lot more of. And returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance, recognizing it is showing kindness to ourselves. You know, if we think about um, somebody who may have done us wrong in some way, and we know that Allah says, always try to find ways to forgive that other person. And if we do that for others, we must also recognize that we should do that for ourselves as well. And the way we do this is to return back to Allah and ask Allah for mercy. So every breath we take in this world is one less breath that we have left in us. Every minute we spend living in this world is one less minute that we are living and one less, one more minute that brings us closer to death. So before we run out of time, my brothers and sisters or breaths, um, let's take that first step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's acknowledge our mistakes. And we don't have to do this publicly. We can do this to ourselves because one of the things that Allah does is covers our sins, right? So if somebody does something wrong to us and nobody else knows about it but us and we protect it, we are, we are emulating an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But feeling that true remorse within us and making a sincere commitment that we're not going to make, we're not going to repeat this mistake one more time, you know. And then if we do, you know, come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know we will falter. That is in our nature. But we shouldn't stop trying. And that is the essence of Toba. That is the essence of how we can use this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make it practical for ourselves. So al tawab returning back to the acceptor of repentance. And we're not alone on this journey, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, each and every one of us have something that we can always do better with. You know, and Allah will Allah is always willing to accept our repentance, always ready to take us back, and always ready to say, you know, here you go. You know, if we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will always welcome us. So let us seek that guidance, let us seek that mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us be among those who return to Allah and repent. And then so that we may, you know. Uh, receive the love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, in another aphorism of uh, Sheikh Ta'ala, um, he mentions, let no sin reach such proportions in your eyes that it cuts you off from having a good opinion of Allah, because whoever knows his Lord considers his sin as paltry next to his generosity. So what the what Sheikh Ta'ala is telling us and reminding us about in this, in this um, wisdom is that we should never allow the gravity of our sins, we feel greater than the weight of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we allow ourselves to lose sight that Allah's mercy, the weight of Allah's mercy is greater, then we are falling into despair. So we should remind ourselves that two other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are told about in the Quran is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent and the most merciful. We start Every chapter in the Quran starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, most merciful, with the exception of one chapter. And that's chapter 9, Surah Tawbah. 
You know, so we should know that Allah wants this for us. Allah wants us to not fall into despair. Allah wants us to have the awareness of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why would we not, you know, just give ourselves that space, give ourselves that, that uh, mercy so that we can reconnect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then ask Allah to guide us on the straight path. You know, from the, uh, from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran was revealed, you know, and, and Allah tells us in the Quran with absolute certainty in verse two of the second chapter, this is the book, there is no doubt about it. A guide for those who are mindful of Allah. So there's two things here that I want us to take away from this uh, second verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. One is Allah is dispelling any and all doubts about whether or not this book is, is the truth or not. And the second thing in this verse also, Allah is saying that this is a guidance for those who are mindful of Allah. And Allah uses the word muttaqeen. So muttaqeen is somebody who has taqwa. And taqwa is having the fear of Allah. Not fear as in Allah is going to punish us, but fear as in Allah is watching over us. You know, Allah is, is going to judge our actions on the day of judgment. And having that awareness that every action we perform is something that we need to do consciously with good intention. So going back to the, the first part that this is the book, Allah is telling us that this is the book of guidance for us. There is no doubt in this book. And what Allah is telling us is that, you know, as long as you have this awareness of Allah, take this book as a guide. Don't just ignore it. You know, it's not like the terms and conditions on a website that you just kind of check, check, and then click submit and away you go. This is not that kind of thing. This is something that you have to consciously engage with consciously put yourself and that is one of the hardest thing to do as a, as a as a human is to learn to put yourself in that in that um, action of repeating you know constantly trying to memorize constantly trying to reflect that is a hard thing for us to do as human beings but as long as we find ourselves in this space where we think about the quran as this guide for us then why would we not want to spend time making sure that we're spending uh, you know, we're learning about what the right path is. You know, if we ever get lost, for example, while we're traveling, what is the first thing we do? We're, our inclinations is turn around and get ourselves back on whichever road we need to go on. If we can't find our way back, what do we do? We go find somebody along the side of the road that says, okay, help me get back on the straight path. So if we listen to that person and we're, we return back to the straight path on our, on our journey, then that person was useful. That person was helpful to us. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to us. Allah is saying, I don't want you to be lost. Here you go. Here's the path I want you to follow. And you know what? I'm going to tell you about all these other things that you need to be aware about. All these things that you should stay away from, all these things that you should be doing. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, is the Quran for us. Not just learning about the attributes of Allah, but also implementing them in our own lives. You know, that, that is sometimes difficult in these modern times as well, because we get distracted. We have so many responsibilities and that's okay. You know, because at some point, you know, we need to stop ourselves and say, it's time for us to return back. And that is where Salah comes in. You know, that is where we remind ourselves that we need to learn even a little bit about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al the acceptor of our return, wants us to follow this prescribed path. You know, when someone passes away, what is that one verse that we recite regularly? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Okay? And what does that translate to? From Allah we came, and to Allah we will all return. Right? So think about that. From Allah we came, to Allah we will all return. In Surah Muzammil also we are told, wastaghfirullaha inna allaha ghafoor rahim And seek Allah's forgiveness. Surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. So today, as we part our separate ways, let us carry this message of hope and mercy in our hearts. Let us strive to embody the spirit of tawbah in our actions, in our interactions, and always seeking Allah's forgiveness and mercy, always seeking to return back to the path of righteousness. May Allah elevate our understanding of the Quran so that we may begin to implement and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah. And may Allah increase us in knowledge and give us wisdom. 
that gives us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it the most. My dear brothers and sisters uh, in Islam, you know, Allah is al tawab the ever-pardoning. And there should be no doubt in our minds that Allah is the most merciful. You know, there's an authentic hadith um, narrated by Ibn Umar that the Sahaba used to count the messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, counting 100 times in a gathering where he would say, Rabbi wa atubu ilayya innaka anta tawabu rahim. Oh Allah, forgive me and accept my repentance, for you are the acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. Think about this for a moment. This is our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to accept his repentance. Okay? The perfect example for us is asking Allah for repentance. Not that he needs it, but he's doing it because he وسلم, wants to be the best of examples and wants to always be that best, best slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that best person who is you know, in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now think about everybody else. Should we then not follow the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So this, this dhikr, that the Prophet Sallallahu used to do. Rabbil firli wa tubu ilayya innaka anta tawabu rahim. Oh Allah, forgive me and accept my repentance. So remember this and recite it as much as you can, as often as you can. Make it a form of dhikr for yourself whenever you sit down and remember Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll say it one more time. Rabbil firli wa tubu ilayya innaka anta tawabu rahim. Rabbil firli wa tubu ilayya innaka anta tawabu rahim. Okay. Oh Allah, forgive me and accept my repentance, for you are the acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, let's pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receive, that we receive Allah's guidance, that we connect and reconnect over and over again with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah accept all of our du'as, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our hearts towards him. Innal muslimina wal muslimat, wal mu'minina wal mu'minat, wal qanitina wal qanitat, wal sadiqina wal sadiqat, والصابرين والصابرات والخاشئين والخاشيات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات وذاكرين الله كثيرا وذكرات وذاكرات عد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وزرياتنا كرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر أن سياتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار رب جلني مكيم صلاتي ومن زرياتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المسير ربنا زلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكننا من الخاسرين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون سلام للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين